Welcome back, slide roll fans. Uh, here are two Frederick Post slide rolls, the basic uh, 1447 model slide roll, which I've used in some videos. Mannheim type, trig on the back, um, very basic. Now, at the other end of their line was this slide roll. This is the uh, Frederick Post Company uh, Versalog slide roll made by uh, Hemi in Japan. Um, this is also made uh, by Hemi. Um, okay, bamboo. Adjustable cursor, adjustable braces. Um, its fitting is the Versa log that it has uh, two sets of four uh, log log scales. Um, also has the folded scales and uh, trig scales, including ST. Um, what it has, which is a little bit unusual and we haven't looked at yet, um, are these root scales, uh, the R1 and the R2. Um, these scales are a little bit different than things we have used, but they are related, uh, so I thought I would do a video on them. Um, you will see these also on some later slide rolls. Um, you'll see them on some favorite Castell slide rolls. Um, you'll even see two sets of them on some of those favorite Castell slide rolls, and they're labeled W1, W2, and they're on both the base and the slide. Um, I'm not going to cover how to use those because I don't have one of those slide rolls. <laughs> um, but what are these for? Uh, let's call these the root scales. And these are for doing uh, higher accuracy squares and square roots. One thing you'll notice on this slide rule is that there are no A or B scales. Okay, There is an A scale on the very late model Versalog 2, um, which uh, there are many fewer examples of. Uh, the Versalog uh, with this arrangement was produced for decades. Uh, there are a lot of them. Uh, the one I have has this uh, basic cardboard uh, case, but you'll see a lot of them with a leather case. Um, very popular slide roll in America. Okay, but let's see what you can do with the uh, R1 and R2 scales. Well, um, what are R1 and R2? They are uh, scales which are twice as long as the C and D. So unlike the A and the B scales on the basic slide roll, uh, which are half the length of A or B, okay, so they're repeated twice, uh, the root scales are twice the length, so you can see uh, R1 starts at 1 and goes it up a little past 3, that's actually the square root of 10 where it ends, right, that's actually at the middle of the normal slide roll, right, so you set 10 there, square root 10 on D, that's exactly the middle of the scales on the slide roll. Okay, and then R2 goes from that square root of 10 up to 10. Okay, um, so essentially they are kind of like reversing the um, relationship between C and D and A and B. They're actually going the opposite direction. Instead of being half as long, or twice as, sorry, instead of being half as long, they're twice as long. So you need two of them to go through the entire range from 1 to 10. Okay, uh, so what that means is, unlike on the Mannheim slide rule where I set something on C or D, let's set here 4, um, and I read the square on the A scale, 16, um, instead of that, if I was to set 4 on C or D, if it's closed, let's set it on D, okay. Um, then what I read on R1 is 2, the square root of 4. Okay, if I have a number which is two digits long, like 25, and I set that on D, then I read 5 on the root scales, but I read that on R2. Uh, so it's very similar to the regular A and B scales in that you need to know how many digits your uh, number has to the left of the decimal. Um, so let's try something a little uh, less clean here. So if I want square root of 8, I will set 8 on D, and then I will read there on R1, uh, 2.83 on R1. Um, if I set 94, I'll set that as 9.4, 
on D, then since that is a two-digit number, I should read that on R2, uh, which is here. This is 9.567, 9.7. Okay. If I have a three-digit number, I go back to using R1. So you see I've, I've uh, gone back and forth, R1, R2, now back to R1 for the three-digit number. Uh, let's see, that's 41, 42, 43. 437 should be about there on D. And I'm reading on R1, uh, reading that as about 20.9. You can see there. Okay, so then for the four digit number, I should go back to R2. So let's set 6900 by setting 69 on D. I go back to reading this on R2. R2 is here, 81, 2, 3, and that's halfway between 83 and 83.1 uh, there on R2. Okay, for numbers less than one, uh, you also alternate. So uh, here I have one digit to the left of the decimal. If I move the decimal one more place, then I should go to R2 from R1. Okay, so for a number like 0.72, you set 72 on the D scale here and you should read this on R2. Uh, so let's see, R2, 8, 4, uh, 8 I read as before. Looks like a little bit more. Okay, 8, 4, 8. You can see we're getting higher accuracy um, and we have a higher resolution scale than if we were using A and B for the same computation um, because things are twice as long using, in this, using them in this manner. Okay, move the decimal one more place to point oh three five. Let's set that on D. Okay, then I should be reading that on R1. Uh, and let's see, so that's uh, 18567187. It looks like a little bit more than 187, depending on how good I've set the hairline. Um, Okay, and then I move it one more, I should read on R2, so let's go to 275. Right about there on D, and then I should read 524, here's 512, 524, and I'm reading that on R2, and putting the decimal place uh, appropriately. Now, what about that decimal place? Why do we put it where we put it, okay, in the result? Uh, well, let's look at 6,900. The idea is the square root of 100 is 10, right? Uh, so what I do is I write this as a pa an even power of 10. So 10 squared, like 10 to the 100, uh, or 10 to power 4, 10,000. All of those have a square root, which is a power of 10, okay? Uh, what happens then is that uh, you get two ranges, right? You get, uh, you get 1 to 10, and you get 10 to 100, right? And so the 1 to 10 numbers you're finding on R1, and then multiplying by that power of 10, and then the numbers from 10 to 100 you're finding on R2, and then multiplying by that power of 10, okay? But you need to take the square root of that power of 10, and to do that cleanly, what you should do is get an even power of 10, then you're just dividing the power of 10 by 2. Okay. Now, of course, uh, using the scale in reverse, you can square things. So if I was to find 3.28, uh, that's going to be on R2 near the beginning. So here's 3.2, 3.28 should be there. Then on D, I read the square. So it looks like 1, uh, 0, 7, and it looks like a little bit more than 7, 5, so I put that at 7, 6 before. Uh, you can see that's very high resolution. Um, okay, if you squared a number like 456, you're also going to find that on R2. So let's see, 4, 5, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6. You can set all three decimal places. Um, then reading square on D, 2, uh, this is 2, 1, so that's 2, 0, 8, and putting the decimal place appropriately there. 
Okay. Um, a nice consequence of having the root scales is that you can compute areas of circles easily. Uh, so, for example, if I set, uh, if I have radius 17.3 and I find that, that's going to be on R1. So there is 1, 7, 1, 7, 3, right there I found on R1. Um, then, the square of that number is reading on D like we just said, uh, but if you take a number on D and you go to DF, that multiplies by pi. So, so setting it on R1 or R2 and then going to D is squaring the number, so I compute 17.3 squared, and then reading on DF computes that number times pi and I read 940 uh, right here on DF. Okay, you could do this in reverse. You could find the number on DF, let's say 279. It's going to be out here. 2567, 279 will be halfway between those two marks. Um, then you can find that number on the appropriate root scale here. It's going to be R2, and I'm going to read 9, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's at the 942 tick mark. Okay? All right, uh, so that's a nice bonus of having both the folded scales and uh, the root scales on the same uh, side of your slide roll, uh, both on the base that required the slide uh, not at all, right? Um, you could do uh, computations with C or CI and start getting creative. So let's say you want to uh, find 90 divided by square root 5. You could think about solving this proportion. Uh, you could set 90 on R. You should be using R2 since that's two digits. So, found it down here, the 90 on R2. Um, and I want to set that over square root 5. Now, why am I setting square root 5 on the C? We'll think about that in a second. Okay, so square root 5 on C. Then coming out to the end of C for the 1. And then reading result on R2, about 40.25. The mark there is between 40.2 and 40.3. Three um, on R2. Now, one way to think of what you did here, right, is you use the R scales as your basic scales. They're twice as long as C or D. So C or D uh, can be used to represent the square root with respect to the R scales. So it's kind of like what you did is you started at some number on your slide roll and you divided by the square root using C because those lengths are half as long. Uh, think back to how you can use uh, a, B, and C, and D in a similar manner. Okay. Um, on the regular slide roll, you would start on the D scale, you would move back using the B scale because on the B scale things are half as long, representing the square roots. Uh, but here, you get to use the scales which are twice as long for such a computation, so you get a more accurate answer. Um, Okay, let's think about how to do something like 7.3 times 2.1 squared. This is a lot like computing the area of a circle. I could find 2.1 on the R scale, finding that there on R1, 2.1. Um, okay, so then D should read the square of 2.1, so I could multiply by, say, um, aligning the 7.3 with the hairline on the CI scale. Then coming out to the end here and reading result uh, 32.2 uh, off of the D scale there. Okay. Um, as a last example here, how could I compute something like this? Well, you could you could do the 3.9, or sorry, the 39 divided by that's supposed to be a 39 uh, divided by 45 first. That's a little less than one. Then squaring uh, using. Uh, rules about exponents that we know. Uh, but here, let's solve this like this. Let's do x over 39 squared is 1 over 45 squared. So what I'll do is, well, I'll think of starting with c. With respect to c, r represents the squares of the distances, right? So notice how this is uh, reversed from the situation we use up here. Okay, so in that case, I'll find 45 on r. 45 on r is on r2, and it's about here. Remember, it's on R2 because 45 is two digits to the left of the decimal. Okay, so I'll put that over the 1 on the C scale.
Okay. Then what I'll do is I'll move out to the 39 on the R scale, which is to the left here. And then I'll read the result. Uh, 7, 5 and a hair, so I read a 7 0.751 before uh, off of the C scale. Okay, so I use C and R directly. Okay, hope you now have a better understanding of how to use uh, your versatile